Hello, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Psalms chapter 46, verse 3, as well as Acts chapter 3, verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your strength that you give us from day to day. Help us to continue on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Psalms chapter 46, verse 3. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. All right, and so this whole chapter is, is often, for the most part, um, just about the distress of the world, the distress of nations, the distress, right? And it's talking about finding refuge in God, right? And how he was going to protect um, what belongs to him. And it says, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. So um, usually swelling is associated with water. Um, and so it's speaking, this last part is speaking of though the waters roar and foam. So though the mountains tremble at its swelling is, is in response to the waters um, roaring and foaming. So the earth is in this great distress. And um, Acts chapter 3 verse 11 was the second verse that he gave me. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people utterly astounded ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. All right. And so um, the, the Holy Spirit, I felt like, was leading me to the fact that while he clung to Peter and John, meaning the man who was healed, right? So um, he he was clinging, right? And, and it's very important for us to cling to the one whom we have gotten hope from, right? So Peter and John, so Peter, remember, represents the rock. He's a rock right? That's what Peter, his name means. And so we know um, on the rock um, in which God built his church is based on the fact that Christ is our cornerstone, right? And, and he is the anointed one. He is the Messiah. And, and, and we cling to him, right? It says, while he clung to Peter and John, so that's that's symbolic of us clinging to Christ, right? It says all the people utterly astounded ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. All right. And so this portico called Solomon's is symbolic also of coming under Christ, right? This portico. And so um, Peter and John are there gathered under this portico. Why? Because they are on the foundation of Christ, right? And so um, they have this man there. He's clinging to them. And then there's also a gathering there under Christ, right? Because remember, where um, we will come to Christ at the reaping, at the rapture, um, after the dead in Christ shall rise. So here you have some people who are, who were a part of the, um, the disciples, they have passed on, this man has passed on, and, and then there's a gathering together, right? All of them are coming together and in one place under Solomon, this Solomon represents Christ. Um, he's a Christ character in the Bible. And so um, they're coming and they are coming under Christ's covering in the Solomon's portico in the temple. All right. And so the, the reason why these two scriptures are conflated is because at this distress is when this is going to happen, right? Um, when the world is going through its worst, God is snatching away and gathering those who have clung to him, right? Who have come under that covering of, of, of his, of his grace, right? And so uh, we have freely received what he has freely given 
And so we run in under this covering during all of these storms and this roaring and the distress of the world. Um, we can find refuge in him. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for hope and strength and joy and peace and long suffering. Lord God, we thank you that you have taught us so much, God. We give you praise and honor and glory with our hope and our trust in you and no one else. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this. Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. In your name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth meaning he is going to show you the way he is going to bless your path. Um, he is um, going to show you a church home that you can go to and, and be baptized in the name of the father of the son and the Holy spirit in the name of Jesus. Also a place where you can go and and be um, with other believers as you stay sharp in the word of God, he's also going to um, help you to make disciples of all men, telling other people about his goodness and the things that he's done for you. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord, bless. oh, one of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down with his word and chew on it and talk to him. Um, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek him out um, while he may be found. Go and seek his face and he is going to reveal himself to you. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.